Hey guys, it's the Ridley Storm here, and I'm here with PUDL semi finals against Raziel and his Pokemon. Now, a couple of things to address. First of all, this is postcom. Because the reason it's postcom is because I completely forgot to turn off, turn on my mic when I battled Raziel today. So. This is postcom. However, it's straight after the battle. So, um, I do kind of know what I'm going into this with. Second of all, there is a weird neck shape on your screen. Uh, this is thanks to Kaz, the owner of the league. He specifically requested a neck cam for the semi finals video. So, here we are. Apparently, I have slightly abnormally large neck. So, I don't think this is doing me any justice, but here we are. Anyway, let's get into the game. So, Raziel, very scary team, very bulky team. As you can see, whoa, pardon me. As you can see on the screen, you can see the mons that we are bringing. Being Meow, Hunchcrow, Zoroark, Sandy Shocks, Quackable, and Deancey. Last time we faced Raziel, we had a very different team. You know, we had Quagsire, we had Volcarona, we had God of War. All of which played a massive part into our win. So we're basically facing a brand new team here. Now, a couple of things to know about Raziel's team um, is that he does bring the Umbra, first of all. Um, brings the Staraptor again, brings the Jagapult again. It brings Ditto this time, which I thought was something that definitely could come. Is that I have a lot of offense, so it makes a lot of sense for it to come. Um, but, and obviously he's got Gambit and Cormanite. This being said, however, this means no Toxapex, which was the first big thing that I noticed because Quackable was a last minute addition to the team. Mainly for spin, I didn't want um, him to get hazards up versus me. I felt like I was going to be doing a lot of switching this game, so I wanted to kind of keep hazards off as much as possible. He does have Corviknight with Defog, but I didn't want to thoroughly rely on that. I didn't really think about it because Dragapult obviously is a really good spinner, so I should have really brought like, I mean, sub wasn't going to work because obviously Infiltrator, but. I don't know. I should have really thought about that a little bit more. Anyway, so I'm thinking of my lead here. Um, my plan was to always lead Honchkrow. Um, sorry, my plan was to lead Honchkrow. Um, but then, like, midway through prep, I built this eject button, Sandy Shocks. So I was like, oh, I'll just lead with that, get up rocks. Um, and then I can kind of get into Honchkrow and kind of do some damage, right? Um, I'm Terra Dark, Super Luck, with Choice Band. Um... To be honest, this set is the only way that I broke through like Pex, Corviknight. Like it's actually a really good set into them because with a crit, it's doing like 50 plus percent to all these mons, even if there's death. So yeah, the only one really stopping it from doing that is obviously the Umbreon, especially if it's Fizz death, Rocky Helmet, that could be a big pain. But we do end up leading with the Sandy Shocks and he leads with Ditto. So obviously here, as much as I think he's gonna click rocks, um, I don't really want to, you know, risk that turn one. Um, I'm trying to like position myself here. This is right. Okay, I think we've got it there. There we go. There we go. That's the angle. Um, yeah, I didn't really. You know, I don't know how Brazil is going to play in the early goings of this match. So I was a pretty safe switch in overall. You know, Volt Switch won't kill me if he clicks Volt Switch. Good play because then obviously he gets momentum. Um, if he clicks rocks, you know, it sucks because now I've got to play with rocks on my side of the field unless I can potentially spin. However, I knew I could obviously live any hit and get a knockoff off, which is big versus Raziel's team. Like, honestly, knockoff is such a good move into his team. Getting rid of all these items makes Hunch Pro's job a lot easier, especially if I have hazards up. So I'm going to click knockoff into the incoming Corviknight. Um, I'm expecting this to be Fizz Death, mainly for the... Um, for my meow. I'm actually going to move my cam over here <laughs> midway through video because, you know, you I'm blocking the health bars there, whereas I'm not here. So there we go. Um, so sorry about that. But I think it did like 35-ish percent, something like that. 30-some 30, 30 percent anyway. See, as you can see, it does do a decent chunk, but it does confirm that he is fizz death because I am adamant and black glasses. So obviously it's not going to do... It would do way more damage if it was for death way way more damage because Meow is not a weak Pokemon she's she's quite strong so here I'm thinking about what to do 
Zoroark is honestly looking pretty, pretty eh this match. Um, I, I changed it last minute to Scarf just in case Dragapult got out of hand. Um, but yeah, it's not looking, not looking great because I can't really click a move safely. I'm thinking though I can potentially get a trick onto the Umbreon, which will definitely help me out. So yeah, I don't really have a great direct switch into Corviknight, so I felt like uh, Zoroark overall was just a decent, decent enough Mon. I think he's probably going to click U-turn, but just in case he clicked Brave Bird, I didn't want to go out into Quack. And then, you know, I've got to deal with um, him getting momentum and, you know, you know all the good stuff. So, anyway, he just click U-turn. So, now I'm thinking I definitely need Rocks up. Because if I can get Rocks up with this Corv Knight sitting at 30-ish percent. Uh, sorry, not 30-ish percent, like 65-ish percent. Um... It's, it's in kill range of a lot of my mons from this point. So, anyway, he just got into Umbreon. Kind of expected. Um, I don't want to take a foul play here. So, I'm considering, do I go Quirk? Do I go Deancey? But, obviously, my main thing was, in prep, I was like, oh, Toxic Umbreon, that's totally a thing. But it's not, because we're, we're post pre-DLC in PUDL Season 1. So, uh, now that I realise this, I'm thinking... This one can't really do much to Deancey. I could potentially get a Spike Up, which could potentially force a Defog from Corviknight. So I'm going right onto Deancey. If he clicks Foul Play, he takes Helmet as well, which is nice. Uh, these rocks are already doing my absolute nothing. I hate, <laughs> I hate playing against. I hate playing when rocks are on my side of the field. It really uh, drives me a bit crazy, to be honest with you. But anyway, clicks Foul Play. We get some Helmet damage off, which is nice. Here I'm deciding what to do, but I already know, you know, Corviknight's potentially like a very good switching into this Mon. Uh, it doesn't get Mystical Fire this gen, so uh, the only move I could hit with is like Diamond Storm. He's already, pardon me, he's already shown to be Fizz Def, so it's not going to do a tremendous amount anyway. And, uh, you know, he sees that I'm Helmet, so he probably thinks I'm defensive. I'm going to click Spikes here. As he stays in, so I'm thinking, oh, Wish is probably just going to come up. He does click T-Wave and misses, which is unfortunate. Because, um, obviously, Paralysis is definitely a potential game player. You know, it's a game-winning status in some games. I mean, it's not, like, massive to get off on a Deancey in terms of speed control. But, you know, and especially with me having rest, like, I could potentially just get a rest off later on in the game. But I'm not really expecting him to stay in here, but... You know, just in case he does and fires off a wish, I want to put him in the position where he's kind of forced to stay in with Umbreon. So I do click Moonblast here on the incoming Corviknight. Corviknight is going to take absolutely zero. However, it does fall below half, which I'm like, okay, so he's probably going to roost here. So I'm going to make take advantage of that play and go out into my Sandy Sharks. I felt like that was the, the best play overall. Um... Get the boy in, potentially get my rocks up, and just kind of start pressuring him as much as he's pressuring me with these rocks right now. Because they are definitely a big pain in the process right now. So, here, I think I do click, um, what do I click? Do I click Earth Power first? I click Earth Power first because I don't really want him to get any momentum going out into Ditto. As he does defog here, Raziel actually did tell me that this was a misclick during the game and I think he said he was meant to click U-turn which would have actually been a really good play because obviously my jet button would have popped and etc etc but if I would have clicked Volt Switch there that, like, that would have been a pretty bad turn on his end but still he goes out into Umbreon this time which is nice for me because obviously he's just defogged the hazards away and now I get my rocks back up which is lovely sorry rocks up for the first time which is big. It's big. I mean, we've seen how much it's been chipping my team down. And if I can do the same to his, that'll be perfect. Especially for the late, later on in the game. So here, I am just going to click Earth Power. Um, again, Ditto is playing mind games with me right now. I don't really want that one coming in at any point. So I am going to click that first. Is going to go for the Wish this time. And here, I believe I just clicked Vault Switch. I think... At the end of the day, if he's going to bring that in now, I get to go back into Meow and click Knock. Um, you know, Corviknight is high health, so it is a guarantee switching, but I could potentially make a play off of that. And, you know, I've got Rocks up now, so I can afford to make these pivots. Whereas if 
rocks or so on my feet um, on my side of the field it would definitely make me think twice about these moves but yeah i'm gonna go out into i'm gonna vault switch um i'm kind of expecting ditto to come in i mean he's made the play before so i don't see why he wouldn't do it again but he goes corvin out and i'm there lavishing it up i'm like this is gonna do a tremendous amount after rocks potentially even a ko we've seen that he's fizzed death we go for vault switch the boy lives on one on bloody one and he's gonna get the wish back however i am more than happy with this the, like i am a very very happy boy right now so here i'm going going with the game plan if i see if i terror crit this corviknight if he's fully fizz death it just dies so uh that is exactly what i'm going for terror dark knight slash is always my play. I was tempted to U-turn because Umbreon is still alive. And if I don't crit that Mon, I do, I go from doing like a decent chunk to like absolutely zero. So I was half tempted to U-turn first, especially with it being like a decent amount of HP still. Um, But I just click the Night Slash. I think at the end of the day, he might stay in um, and click Body Press or something to weaken me. That was me double checking that I was super luck. Um But yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna terror dark here. I'm taking my taking my sweet old time, but I know the play in the end, and I do go for it as he does withdraw. And he does go out into the Umbreon, which is sitting around like 70%. Maybe a little bit higher than that. But I am gonna terror. Terra Dark is in. I think this is the first time I brought Terra Dark Contra Pro this season. And it's semi-finals, baby. So let's see it. Um, so yeah, so I do go for the Night Slash. Obviously, it is a resisted hit. But I do have the Super Luck. I am Choice Banded. And this is Spideff Umbreon. So we do get the crit. And we do a tremendous amount to this Umbreon. And I see from my calcs, if he's fully Spideff, which I'm pretty much guessing that he is at this point. Uh, another night slash actually does just kill goes for protect i don't i couldn't remember if that quite put him out of range or not um i think it potentially did put him out of range if i didn't get a crit um however it was very close i think it would have would have been a roll at that point contro is so so strong and with this umbreon being spit it definitely helps helps the cause you know if this was viz death umbreon we wouldn't even be remotely in this position right now but we are going to quit Night Slash again. We do get another crit. That's a super luck. And the walls are getting broken. The walls are getting broken. Umbreon is down. And that is massive. That is big for Meow. Considering I'm not running Flower Trick this week. I'm running Low Kick, Knock Off, Sucker, and Taunt. So, um, you know, I kind of needed Umbreon low anyway. For Meow to kind of just click Knock Off, click Taunt and have even a, a chance versus that. So anyway, in comes Ditto. In comes the boy. Just gonna trace Deborah. She's now, she's a lady. Whoa, 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 she's a lady. Um, And here, I'm like, what do I do? And I'm like, I have a Deancey. What do you mean, what do I do? That's always my switch in. So Deancey's coming in. I was half tempted to Night Slash again, to be honest with you. Um, but I just thought, Dance is such a safe switch into this Mon. Um, but he does cut U10. So, you know, if I would have stayed in, I mean, I would have took a lot of damage, right? But I would have just got another kill, to be honest with you. Another, I, I, he didn't have a switch in. So I would have just got another kill. But, you know, he could have crit me and then crit, I definitely would have died. And yada, yada, yada. Well, actually, he does have, camp, he does have Gambit. So never mind. I made the right play. So anyway. In comes the Gambit, and I'm terrified of this Mon. This Mon's so, so scary. Supreme Overlord gets shown, so he's not defiant, which means I can safely spam Moonblast without worrying about this Mon getting a plus two, which is nice, but we do see the leftovers, which is also quite nice, actually. Here, I have to go out into Quack. I'm thinking, you know, he could click Zen Headbutt, and that would be a bad, bad time, but I was calking, and I live Zen Headbutt into Sucker. Um, I was almost... Papaya, uh, is that what it's called? Papaya berry? Pa I think it's called that, yeah. The psychic berry on this mon, just so I could take the Zen headbutt into the sucker, guaranteed no matter what. Like, obviously if I wasn't weakened or anything before. 
So, but I want Covert Cloak because of the what's someone called Toxapex and Gastrodon, both of which I am slightly surprised not to see, but more so uh, Pex I'm surprised than Gastro since he brought it last time. But anyway, Quack comes in. And I'm thinking Zen Headbutt is getting clicked here, but Einhead gets clicked, which is nice. It still does a decent amount of damage, to be fair. Um, but this is why Quack's here. Quack is here to check this Mon. I mean, it is actually looking very good into his team right now, uh, all things considered. Here, I make a bit of a ballsy play. I'm thinking there's no chance he's staying in here. You know, we've seen that he's lefties, not Chuffle, so I just don't think he risks the Gambit. I go for Ice Spinner. Catching a potential Dragapult. However, we do catch the Corviknight instead. Which is completely fine. I am adamant Quackable. So, I spin it into CC is going to be able to knock this one out. And that is exactly what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the CC the following turn. And Quackable is going to pick up a kill. And we are, we are breaking down the walls. You know, he's got Corviknight. Uh, Corviknight's down. Umbreon's down. He's got Ditto left. He's got the... What's the one called? He's got the Dragapult left. He's got Staraptor left. All his offense is left, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And he's got Gambit left. So, literally all of his offense is left. So, I need to... I don't know why I just said I need to. I'm just happy that the defensive mons are down. It's, it makes my faster mons life a lot easier. It makes Meow's life a lot easier. And it's looking good. We're looking good right now. So I do go out into Deborah, the Hunch Chrome, right away. I just go for sub. At this point, I'm thinking sub Willow. That's a really good bring into me. Makes a lot of sense. So here I'm expect fully expecting to get Willowed, but I'm thinking if he Willows me, you know, I'm going to be at a decent amount of health still. Um, and I could just kind of spam Night Slash, even even Willowed. He does have the Gambit in the back, which is becoming... Oh, me, whoa, you guys could really see that yawn, couldn't you? It's late, but anyway, yeah. You... What was I saying? Gambit's becoming a little bit of an issue to switch into, but, you know, Dragapult is my is the issue in front of me right now. So I'm just going to keep on clicking Night Slash until Deborah dies. She's done, she's done me well. You know, she broke through that Umbreon, which I would have had a hard time breaking through. Otherwise, I only really had Quack and then Deancey. But, you know, Deancey's here for Dragapult. It's here for Staraptor. It, Deancey has a lot to deal with right now. So, it, it's nice that Deborah took that little bit of weight off of her right now. So, Dragapult is going to continue to sub. I'm going to continue to Night Slash. And I'm not giving in. I just need to just get rid of this mom. Or he gets rid of me. One of the two. But no, this pulse set is definitely very good into me. You know, my, my my main priority being my sucker punch mons. It definitely helps out versus that. Kind of makes me wish I brought Scarf Meow. Because that would have been so good here. Uh, very spammable as well. At this point in the game anyway. But... You know, like, being able to switch up between my dark moves and low kick was definitely something I valued this game. So, I'm sat here thinking, do I go out into Dancy? We've seen him click darts. He's probably going to do it again. But I was like, if he's some, like, weird mix set with Hydro Pump, I don't want to play that game, you know? And Star Actor is full health in the back. And it's still a threat that I need to deal with accordingly. It's not come in at all, this game. Um, you know, last time it came in and then I brought in Cress and then Cress took loads of damage, but then Staraptor took loads of damage in conjunction with that. But this time, Staraptor has not entered the field. So I'm not playing that game. I'm gonna go out into Neptune now. My Deancey. And I'm just gonna quit Moonblast. It's very free now. You know, he's got Ditto, which can take one. Obviously transforming into Deancey. Um, but left, he's got Gambit, which I would happily take damage on. He's got the Staraptor 2, again, happily take damage on. It goes for a sub. That's perfectly fine by me because this Dragapult's getting weakened. Not like he really needs health on it, to be honest. I mean, it, the health is good for the subs, but 
once I get my hands on this Mon, it's kind of just going to die to whatever move I click versus it. So it doesn't, he didn't necessarily need health on it. And, you know, if I choke and he makes a play on that and gets a sub up, it could be very dangerous. So completely understandable going for a sub, first of all. You know, I could have over predicted, etc., etc. Anything could have happened that turn. But anyway, um, I'm going to click move last again. Again, very spam bomb. Very easy at this at this point of the game to just click, and you can kind of see what his answer is to this. Again, all I've seen. Oh my god, pardon me, guys. All I've seen so far is Dragon Ants and. No, I've not seen Dragon Ants. I don't know what I'm on about. I've seen Sub and I've seen Dragon Darts. Is what I meant to say. So, uh, Raziel's gonna take a minute and. As he should, I mean, he needs to consider all of his options. This is a semi-finals game after all. This is this is intense, intense stuff. So anyway, Ditto comes in and this is where <laughs> I figure out my oh, mic. wasn't recording this whole time. There we go. <laughs> but then I decide, I'm just going to mute. I'm not going to talk for the rest of it. I was like, at the end of the day, I've still got the video. I've still got the music. So I can kind of just record this post comp. It doesn't last very long with my mic being present so <laughs> you can really I was really quiet anyway so you know it works it works out I hope that my mic here is pretty good I don't have it on exactly my same uh, scale but yeah So here, I'm a bit flustered after realizing that my mic was not recording properly, so I do end up making my move. I go out into Quackavol, I believe. Uh, I did not need, uh, sorry, I went into Sandy Shocks first. I did not need Sandy for anything at all. And I felt like this was just a very safe play. Just, just overall, really. Like I say, I didn't need Sandy, so. In fact, the eject button, it works, but you know, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, it works actually because now I get to go out into my Quackable. I know I'm hovering Zoro. I was thinking about it, but you know, I'm scarfed and I can't trick this one obviously because it's scarfed also. So I was thinking I can't click any one move right now. You know, Staraptor comes in. If I click Shadow Ball, Staraptor or Gambit comes in. If I click Focus Blast, Dragapult comes in. I can't click a move right now that works for my team. So Quackable comes in. I calc that I can live an Earth Power quite comfortably. Com oh my god. Comfortably. I just messed up that word completely. What the hell? Anyway, I can live it pretty easily. And I was like, wait. If he, like, plays this wrong, this is potential for me to just win the game. So, clicks Earth Power again. I click Rapid Spin to get a speed boost. And if I get one more Rapid Spin, like, this is potential game over. Um... Like, if he lets this die, and then I get my speed boost up, this this game is over. So I click Roost here on his potential for the Earth Power. And I basically just have to spam Rapid Spin once I click this Roost, if he stays in. Because the thing is as well, I do have Meow in the back with Sucker Punch, so... Um, it's not like this Mon can trace me and then reverse sweep me, you know? So anyway, he brings in Staraptor. Good play on his part. You know, I click Roost this turn. Uh, probably should have just clicked CC, but that's fine. I get Quack back up to a decent amount of health to deal with uh, King Gambit. It just means that I can definitely switch into King, Bang oh, King Gambit later on without, like, worrying if he's going to click Zen Headbutt and KO me. Or what the what the game plan was that so I'm gonna withdraw I do in fact go on to Sandy Sharks again do not need this mon if this one's scarfed it outspeeds me and kills me anyway so I do not need this right now and you know Dragapult outspeeds me it got up its rocks which is what I needed Sandy Sharks for this game to be honest and um, so here I go out into Deancey obviously it's my uh, comfortable check to this Mon. And now Moonblast just picks up a kill. 
Uh, Ditto doesn't live anymore. This one stays in. Brave Bird plus Rocky Helmet plus Recall plus Moonblast will kill it. I've got a slight bit of offense on this Dancy. I've got a decent bit of special attack and I am modest, so it will just kill a Staraptor after all the recoil. But we're gonna see what he's gonna do. As he does withdraw, and he does sack the Ditto, which obviously, it was very low in HP, but now I'm thinking if I can get, somehow get into the same position with Quackaval, which is gonna be very unlikely in this in this sort of end game. Um, now it definitely just cleans up. But I do go for the Moonblast. Not this man out, and you know, he's still got ve three very scary mons left. Um, he's got King Gambit, which deals with Deancey, and then he's got Straptor and Dragapult, which Deancey does wall the pair of. So obviously he does go into King Gambit, Queen Gambit actually, sorry my lady. Uh, Queen Gambit is in. She's so scary, look how intimidating she is. Um, so here, I'm debating on what to do. I'm like, Zoroark doesn't really do much, but then I'm thinking, if I can get this uh, Dragapult in a position where it's the only Mon left and I can click Shadow Ball versus it and kill it and then I have Quack of All left to deal with uh, Gambit, that is the perfect situation I find myself in. And I'm like, now that I know he's sub, Meow is, is just mind games with that and I don't want to play those really if I can help it. Um, I think Meow does live a dart. But, you know, potential to crit, etc, etc. And it would be close, obviously, as well. So, I'm really debating my move here. I really don't know what to do. Um, in the end, I do decide to go out into Meow Scarada. Again, purely because I didn't want to play the mind games with the Staraptor. I actually think my play should have been Zoroark. However, you see that the timer did actually run out on me here. And I click rest, which was definitely not why I wanted to click. However, he clicks Sword Stance, not Iron Head this turn. So Deancey does in fact live, which is massive, by the way. That is that is huge that Deancey is able to stay around because, you know, if I lost this man, uh, Staraptor automatically becomes a massive threat. Um, and the game is very, the, the end game is very different. So here, I'm going to do probably what I should have done. Uh, in the first place, instead of really even going Meow, I should have just sacked this Mon, because then I can bring in Meow after it. But anyway, Violet's going to come in, and she is going to fall to the Iron Head. But now this Mon's plus two. This Mon is <laughs> now very scary. You know, it's got three Mons dead in the back, so Supreme Overlord is thriving. But luckily, I did get the Roost off with Quackavolt earlier on in the game. So I am able to go out into him. Uh, I should live any hit barring a crit, but I shouldn't even be in this position in the first place is, is kind of my point. Um, I probably should have even just gone hard Quack. Quack doesn't really beat the last few members of his team, so I definitely could have just gone into Quack. But anyway, we're here now. We live the Sucker Punch. We don't get crit, which is nice. We click CC and down goes Gambit, which is excellent. Excellent one to get rid of. Now, we've got Pull and Staraptor left. Both of which, Deancey, if she wasn't asleep, could very much deal with and win the game at this point in time. However, now we have a sleeping Deancey, so I have to play this game a little bit different, this this cheeky little end game. So, here, uh, I have to click Ice Spinner. I don't want this Dragon Ball to get a sub up on my switch into Deancey. That sounds like hell, and I don't want to deal with that right now. So, I am just going to click Ice Spinner, making sure that he does not get that sub up on my potential switch into Deancey because if that happens the game is looking very scary if he's something like sub DD um, yeah not a good time so he does try and go for it good play on his end I feel like that was the it was, he was playing on my choke right so it makes sense and I mean this game is definitely not over you know uh, we still got the Sucker Punch Mind Games with Meow to play. And we've still got Deancey. And this game has been incredibly intense. Perfect for a semi finals game, to be honest with you. But anyway, so... And, you know, we guys got the Staraptor left. This Staraptor is something like Banded Quick Attack. 
um, and he gets my Deancey low enough, you know, that can that can definitely change the game also here. So I am going to go into Deancey this time. I felt like, you know, he's not got much to do uh, apart from click darts. I feel like that's the only real play there, which he does go for. He does get some lefties back. And now I just have to spam Moonblast until I wake up is my plan as he does reveal the Dragon Dance. And here I shit myself. I can't lie. This this man suddenly got very scary very quick because obviously I don't have sleep talk on this Deancey. I have to sit here and let this man Dragon Dance on me twice. And yeah, uh, I'm terrified to be honest with you. Uh, as obviously he's going to click DD again. It's his only real play here. And I'm Cow King, and luckily plus two Phantom Force does not kill me. However, if he crits me, uh, uh, I think the game's just over, to be honest. And I hate that I'm in this position because it's just, it's basically Russian roulette, right? You know, I'm, it, I'm just waiting to see what we draw out of this turn. Um, because it could very easily be a very different game all of a sudden. And then, you know, I have to go into Meow. We have to play Sucker Punch games. And it's a 50-50 at that point. And the odds are getting stacked and stacked against me at this point in time. But we are going to click Moonblast. Obviously, it's going to get a bit more health back. And this is the moment of truth. Does Dragapult pull it out for him? Not quite. Not quite. We click Moonblast. Down goes Dragapult. And in comes Staraptor. And I'm thinking, at this point in the game, how does Staraptor win? I'm thinking, I'm, first of all, it comes in and I'm like, wow, it's a lot healthier than I thought it was. But then again, it's not touched the field yet. So, makes a lot of sense that it's at this health. Obviously. Uh, it clicks post combat. Good play on his end, you know, don't, not wanting to take the recoil and it kills the rest of my mons from this range. So, CC makes a lot of sense. He's going to take the Rocky Helmet though. And here, I go out into Meow. And I click Sucker Punch. At this point in the game, I cannot lose. If he's Roost, and clicks Roost, um, he can't get a sub if he's that. If he clicks Roost, I then know I'm faster, so I can click Knock Off the next turn. If he scoffs, you see Sucker Punch just kills him right here, which we do see that it does. And we are going to pick up the win against Raziel 2-0 in the semi-finals. This match was crazy. Crazy, crazy game. Like, like I said uh, earlier on, he said the defog uh, move was a misclick, which I think... Definitely were definitely mattered if he was wanting to click U-turn because I, I still had rocks up on my side of the field at that point and he would have got rid of my jet button and it just would have been a very different game at that point to be honest with you. But alas, we are in the finals. PODL finals are calling our name and our opponent has been revealed. We are facing Finley. If you remember, we lost to Finley in the regular season and Finley is someone that I've known for years and years and years. So it just feels right that we are both the finalists in PUDL season one. And that is going to take place next week. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been Darude Leaf Storm and I'll see you all later. Finals, baby. Bye guys.